we're going to do something interesting here. Um, I have the notes, the activity that you should have gone around the room at this point and investigated using the mobiles, everything that you should need to know to fill out this entire document on uh, your notability, including the Venn diagram. Okay. Now, I'm going to go through the Venn diagram with you. However, I do want to point out that the key is right here. I wouldn't just look at the key and put this aside and be done with it because you need to follow along and understand everything that goes along with this. Okay. Now before we do that, the key is there for you to check your answers to. That's fine. But getting a little bit of a background information on prokaryotic and eukaryotic. First of all, we know what cells are. Basic unit of all living things. Unicellular is one. Multicellular is many. We are made up of a multicellular organism. We have more than one cell. Think about it in terms of blood cells. You have millions of blood cells. And then there are such simple items as amoebas. Okay, an amoeba right here in this picture is a unicellular organism. Okay, so all it is is one cell. That's it. We go back and we remember some old scientists. And this scientist, Robert Hooke, we remember that he is responsible for coining the term cells, and he did this by looking at a piece of cork. Um, and remember, he, when he looked at cork, he felt like they were monk monasteries, or at least that's what it reminded him of, and that's why he coined it a cell. Anton van Leeuwenhoek, father of micros microscopy, uh, saw tiny things. He also looked at his teeth. We remember that. Pretty gross. And then they eventually, along with Schleid and Schwann and Virchow, came up with the cell theory. And that cell theory states that all cells are the basic unit of life. All living things are made up of cells. And new cells come from pre-existing cells. They're not just that free cell formation. From our cell theory debate, we know that from battle mania. And then we get into these cells. And we have the difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic. And when we look at this part, this specific part of our, our notes right here, or our little investigation, we wanted to break down the words, and the words are broken down like this. We have pro, meaning before, and karyotic, meaning nucleus, for prokaryotic. So before the nucleus, that's what that means. These cells are here before the nucleus was seen. Eukaryotic cells came later and they have a true nucleus. Okay, In the prokaryotic cell over here, you can see no nucleus, it's just got DNA. Over here, very clearly defined nucleus. The DNA is inside of it, but we have a very clearly defined nucleus. Okay, Eukaryotic cells, again, they have a nucleus. They're bigger, they're more complex. And one of the things that makes them more complex is that they have membrane-bound organelles. So what a membrane is, is it's kind of a protective barrier that sits around. It lets certain things in, it lets certain things out. Uh, and the eukaryotes have membrane-bound organelles. Prokaryotes do not. The DNA here is a little bit more complex. It's held inside the nucleus. When we have eukaryotes, we can either be multicellular or we can be unicellular. Remember I pointed out the amoeba. The amoeba is a unicellular eukaryote. It has a nucleus. Okay, but it's unicellular. It's small. Uh, some examples are the animals from the animal kingdom, plants from the plant kingdom, and there's even a fungi kingdom as well. Okay, when we start to talk about prokaryotes, we get some of the no's here. No nucleus, no membrane-bound organelles. They're so much simpler. There are no multicellular prokaryotes. They're all unicellular. They're much smaller. Their DNA is simpler, and instead of it being more complex in what we would call chromosomes, the DNA here is in a circular strand. And let me show you on here, on our little investigation, which you're going to check your notes with on blended schools, you can see down here describing the DNA and chromosomes. And for the prokaryotes, I have a single strand, and we call it free-floating. And for the eukaryotes, we have multi-chromosomes. Okay, so way more complicated on the DNA in the eukaryotes. And these are what we would call bacteria or archaea. And archaea are really unique because the term archaea means extremophiles. And in science, philic, or files right there, means loving. 
And so when we say extremophiles, we mean that these things love extreme conditions. So we have these archaic bacteria that live next to deep sea vents where it's extremely acidic. You know, we always think about the snotites. And what the snotites were was that they lived in an extremely acidic environment. We have these yellow stone hot springs, which extremely hot temperatures. The Antarctic subglacial lakes, archaic bacteria live here and they survive in sub-freezing temperatures. And then we have the Atacama Desert, which is an unbelievably dry place and we're finding bacteria or archaic bacteria to live there as well. So extreme conditions, they love them, they live there, they thrive in these conditions. Some similarities, and this is where we're going to get into our uh, Venn diagram. Okay, and We're actually going to start by putting some of these things in there. Okay, so when we, we're going to pull up our Venn diagram here in a second. Okay, so let's go ahead and label our similarities, and we'll call these both. Okay, some of the things that were the same between them was that they both had organelles. Okay, that's a definite one. They both did have organelles. Let's see what else they have here. Uh, they have DNA. We like that one. They both have DNA, and that was in different forms, but they both had DNA. They both contained ribosomes, and they both went through a process called cell division different ways of cell division, but they both did cell division. Now we have our prokaryotic one, which if we use this sheet to go down it, I'm just going to highlight a couple of things. We have that they were 3.5 billion years ago is when we first saw them. They are smaller, okay, because remember they're small. They have no nucleus. They have DNA, they have free-floating DNA, but no nucleus. They're usually bacteria or archaea, and they go through binary fission. And we could call these an extremely simple, an extremely simple organism. The eukaryotes, on the other hand, the eukaryotes, on the other hand, are about 1.5 billion years old or billion years ago is when they first came. They are larger and usually uh, multicellular, although they can be unicellular. They have a nucleus. Remember, eukaryote means true nucleus. So they definitely have a nucleus. An example would be animals. Um, you are a eukaryote. It's an easy way to remember it. You are a eukaryote. And then they go through a process called mitosis and they would be more complex. Okay? Basic, basic background information on our prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. I'll go over this on Monday when I return, but hopefully this gets you started.